Okay, it's gonna be something like this. I'm gonna show you how you could just take a simple reference photo and just change it up, okay? Uh, I don't have to stick to this picture at all. So, I will have the picture hanging somewhere here or down here so you can see what's going on. So first I'm gonna draw real quickly. I'm gonna try at least real quickly. My little atomizer. Done. All right. So let's see, let me look at this real quick. Uh, we got a... high view here. Then it goes something like this. Oh, it's a little bit too far, actually. Like that. Water stops here. Okay. And all right, that's basically my horizon. You never really want to go in the middle of a canvas, okay? It's going to make for a very boring composition. So you, what you want to do is either if you if you if the picture calls for being in the middle, offset it a little bit. Either go a little bit higher or just a little bit lower. Now, if the sky is really not your main focus, then you should bring the landscape higher. If the sky has a lot of focus, you want a lot of attention to the sky, bring your horizon a lot lower, okay? So it all depends on what you're trying to focus on. Here's mainly the landscape. The sky is not so much because it's not, not that it's boring. It's just that, you know, there's not gonna be much interest in the sky. All the interest is going to be right here in this general area. So and try to remember your rule of third. Divide your canvas into thirds. Okay. So these corners are going to be where your main subject are going to, you know, catch the interest of the viewer. Okay. These are the golden corners where you want your main subject to be somewhere aligned. So you can see that my line is not quite in these uh, thirds here. It's almost there, okay? You don't have to be exact. It's just the approximate where you want things. So that's just a little quick lesson on that. All right. Now I just drew the picture the way it is, but I may change it up a little bit and add another mangrove here somewhere. It's possible. I'm not 100% sure. Like, uh, you know, it, you do what you want to do with your painting. Okay? That's that's the artistic part of things. All right? All right. So now we're going to start with... I'm going to start with my darks. I'm not even going to bother with the sky yet. I'm going to start with my darks. So what I like to do is uh, to make a nice dark, I like using Prussian blue. and burnt umber. Makes kind of a greenish dark. You could add a little bit of, ooh, that's a little bit too much. Crimson. Crimson, burnt umber, and red. We'll make, give you a nice dark color. Now remember, these are just the initial uh, steps to this painting. Yeah, it gave it more of a greenish uh, tinge, but that's okay. It's not a problem. You'll see what happens next. So remember, this is acrylic. Acrylics, you work in stages. All right. So we're going to start with that. Now that I have that established, actually, I could add a little bit more burnt umber. Add some ultramarine. Umber. Once this dry, you see I can make this 
darker. If you're new to my channel, you will see that I paint in a very impressionistic style. Okay, what I'm trying to teach you that others aren't really teaching you is just capturing the essence of what you're looking at. Okay, I don't want an exact re replica of uh, my reference. If the whole reference photo is beautiful, the entire thing, okay, yeah, sure, why not? But I'm not going to make it like detailed. If I want in detail, you know, at, at this point, I might as well just take a picture. I say that all the time in my videos, but it's true. Might as well just take a picture because that's about as detailed as you're going to get. Okay. Now, not to bash those that do detailed paintings and all that. I admire their work. I admire their mastery behind that. But it's just not for me. I don't think it gives too much interest. When you have loose paintings, all right, it gives the viewer a chance to make up their own mind, to add to the story, okay? To give it more interest, to let them be there, let, it, let them imagine they're in the painting or they've been there before without giving too much detail. All you know, oh, this place is, you know, I recognize this place because it's pretty detailed. I know exactly where it is. No, let them immerse themselves into your painting, all right? So that's part of the lesson here. And this is what I try to do with a lot of my paintings. Just give you a little hint so anywho so now i'm going to go with some burnt umber alizarin crimson and ultramarine blue make this like purple maybe even darker than that now you might be wondering why did i not use the ultramarine or uh, the prussian blue as opposed to the ultramarine good question now the Prussian blue is very powerful. It would give me a nice muddy uh, purple with, you know, a white, red, and the uh, burnt, um, Prussian blue. It would give me a nice dirty purple, but ultramarine would be more fitting. This is more of a cooler color. This one's more of a warmer blue because it's got red into it. This one has more of a green tinge to it. All right, so, all right, now let me just lay out. These brushes, I swear, are just like wonderful to paint with. Now you will see on the reference photo, there's, there's these little potholes. And we're gonna put these in there too, eventually. Let me just put the masses first. As you can see, look at that, I'm not really paying really too much mind of how the paint's going on there. I may have to go a little bit darker, a little bit more blue. As I'm getting towards the front here. And look at that, I'm just like whatever, you know, boom. Because as, as you come forward in the painting, the colors are usually going to be darker. And usually warmer if it's daylight, cooler if it's like more of an evening shot. Okay. So now, let me see. Let's do... Let me do the sky and then I'm going to do the water. So for the sky, I'm going to use uh, the brush that I'm using he here that I've been using the black one with the black tips are the Princeton Catalyst Poly Tip Bristles. Okay, and this is a flat a number six. They're in the description as well. You can find links to that. Buy yourself a set. They are so smooth to paint with. Ridiculous. Anyway, so. Let's start with this guy. So now I'm going to paint this guy. I said, like I said, the picture should be somewhere in one of these corners. I'm going to use, with this evening color, I'm going to use yellow ochre. I may eventually put some yellow out on my palette, but not for now. Yellow ochre, a little bit of this nice cad red light. 
perhaps a little bit of burnt umber to tone it down. More yellow. More white. Let's see what we get. Yeah, that's about good. The trick with what I do like about these brushes, and I think the the, the reason behind its success is the synthetic bristles that they put on here hold pretty much a good amount of water. I think that's the trick behind here. All right, so we got this guy here. Like I said, the sky really was not that much of an interest, but you know. So I'm gonna add a little bit of this nice crimson up in the sky, give it some flavor. Look at that, really not being careful here. Just, just to show you that, you know, you can do this, ladies and gentlemen, you can do this. So it's gonna be a transition kind of a color, maybe a little bit of, ultramarine blue here, let me see, I'm at a weird angle. Look at that nice, nice color. The paint's still a little bit wet that I can transition the colors. All right, so now we're gonna make like this blue on the bottom here, really light blue. So I'm going to use, you know what, use the same color, add the ultramarine blue throw it with all this orangey in there. Perhaps a little bit of burnt umber, really tone down this blue. Maybe add a little bit of this cool red here. I know that it looks, you'd say red is a warm, but you have cooler reds, you have warmer reds. Just remember, make a, maybe more white. I just want to tone it down, make it more of a grayish, grayish blue. Let me test out the color. That's a little bit better. And remember, when you look in a reference photo, the colors of the sky is going to be light. Okay, and you're going to have this tendency of wanting to go just about as light as what you see it. Uh, don't fall into that trap. Just make it a little bit darker than what you see. What I'm painting here is actually a little bit darker than what my reference photo is. It's just a trick of the eye here. You think that it's really lighter, but when you compare it to next to another... Um, colors here then you will see the contrast is going to be really kind of off and you can see that I painted over some of what I already did and that's fine because I could just go back over it this is like you know really the first layer I may add to this layer of paint here on top of it my brush is pretty wet it's wiping off there you go and put some thick paint Okay, and you can even add, uh, let me add a little bit more red here. Make it like a transition. There, like gray it down, make it like a nice transition color. You see how that transitioned, right? Just like that. Folks, I'm telling you, you can do this. I just basically used the two colors that I already had in there, okay, this color, and just added the same uh, red that I had on top here, a little bit of white, 
boom, just make it a gray. You want to have these muted colors, okay? It's important that your colors are muted. The reason is when I just want to put highlights up here, if I ever choose to, the highlights are going to stand out. They're going to pop because the surrounding colors are muted, okay? And then the highlight is just going to be more of a pure chroma, more of a pure color, all right? So two reasons. If your highlights are not showing up really good is because the colors surrounding it are about the same value, meaning dark or light. A value of one is white, a value of 10 is black. So if your values between these two colors are about the same, you know, which these are not too far off, uh, you know, which is what I want. But if I put a highlight, if the highlight's about the same value of these, then, you know, they're really not going to show. So either I have to make these darker or I have to mute the colors more in order to show uh, the highlight. So basically it's kind of like one of those rules. I hope that made sense. You could always post in a comment if you didn't understand it. I'll explain it to you again. I have no problem with that. So let me use some of that color here. Some of this red again. A little bit of it, a little bit of this blue here. There you go. The trick to water is if your sky is dark, your water is going to be lighter. If your if your sky is light, then your water is going to be darker. Just kind of rule of thumb when it comes to reflections. Reflected light. If your subject here is white, it's going to be darker right here on the bottom. If your subject over here is dark, then the same color but just lighter in the water basically is what it comes down to there you go i added too much water here but we'll hide that with something else we'll see so now i'm going to add a little bit more yellow to this color here maybe a hint of uh, more yellow So now I'm looking more at a direct angle, so which is going to reflect the colors that you see up here closer. I can adjust that afterwards. Right now, just putting the base color because I find it's like too light. Actually, let me just go ahead and just do that. Add a little bit of red, yellow ochre. Let's add a little bit of blue, make it more of a grayish color. There you go. Remember, blue and orange, when you add white, will gray each other out. All right, so now we have the basis for our painting. Now that we got that covered, I'm going to start working again towards... Let me see if... Yeah, this is dry. I'm going to start working again against these tree lines. I think I'm going to leave the sky the way it is. Um, I don't want to mess around too much with it. Maybe I might put a highlight here somewhere. I don't know yet, but uh, I'm going to work, make this darker and shape the tree a little bit more and then start working on the water again and do this possible mangrove that I wanted to do here. So we'll see. Let's take them one step at a time. So now let me change brushes. Okay, this is a number two filbert. Because I'm going to be working in small spaces. I'm going to take burnt umber, ultramarine blue, and a little bit of crimson. More ultramarine blue in, in this. So let me mix my darks here. Maybe a little bit more burnt umber here.
like I said, in acrylics, it goes in stages. And it's nice to be able to have these uh, colors show through, transparent colors, because sometimes it actually works to your advantage to do so. So make them a little bit darker here. And I'm going to work some lights in these colors here. Maybe add a little bit of yellow ochre. A little bit of Prussian blue. And yellow ochre. Make it like this green color. And I'm letting it mix in a little bit with some of the other colors while it's wet. Just the top parts at least. Maybe a little bit more Prussian blue, a little bit of crimson. Make some darker areas. Make a little bit darker background here. Just trying to fix some areas that I think I kind of messed up on here. Okay. Let me rework the color of the ocean here. Let me go this time crimson, yellow, white, maybe a little bit of ultramarine blue just to tone it down. All right, now I'm gonna start working on these sand here. Ultramarine blue, I'm gonna put uh, ultramarine blue burnt umber, perhaps a little bit of alizarin crimson. Now I see it's more of a darker it's like this sandbar basically it's a little bit darker towards the back there from what I see in the picture and I'm okay with that
Okay. I'm going to vary. Adding just a little bit of white. Vary some of the colors here. Add some blues and blues and purples. And I'm letting some of the base color show through. And the reason why I'm letting some of the base color show through is gonna it's gonna just add more interest. Okay. And you'll see why in a few minutes. It's all going to make sense in a few. Just got to be patient there. All right, something like that. So now I have all this variation in color, and you'll see why. Now, this kind of looks like 2D. I'm going to start making some of the darks to show the edges of that water. Okay, so I'm going to put some ultramarine blue. burnt umber and a little bit of crimson and the reason why I'm using crimson not this light here is because ultramarine blue crimson and burnt umber are semi-transparent colors semi-transparent colors make a lot richer and darker um, colors so let's see I'm gonna put that edge here okay I'm gonna create this edge of this pool of water here and we could you know if you screwed up we could always fix whatever in a few minutes I'm putting it nice and thick and dark and if it's not dark enough you'll have a chance to make it even darker so now it looks like an edge here let me just like smooth out the tops a little bit sorry if I put a little bit everywhere oh, there we go just like that okay now I'm gonna put lighter I'm just trying to gray down some of this uh, color. So I just added burnt umber, um, yellow ochre, and white. As you can see, it kind of grays down because it was like too stark, too bright of a red. So I just muted it down. I didn't add too much white. Now you can see there's more of a muted color. The contrast is a lot different now because it was high chroma here. You had these intense colors and they were both fighting against each other. So now I toned down this part by just, like I said, using yellow ochre, um, a little bit of burnt umber and just some white, okay? And then just went glazing over it, okay? I didn't use thick paint. I just glaze. I used a lot of water. Look how thin this is over here, okay? I used a lot of water and just glazed over it and just left it the way it is. All right. So now, let me show you a little trick here. So now I'm going to start, it's going to be between this color and this color. I'm going to start making these little puddles of water. Actually, let me use a different brush here because I might want a little bit of sharper edges. 
I'm using a filbert number eight. This is from uh, Royal Langnickel. Okay, this is a Royal Langnickel Z93T number eight. So I could get sharp edges. So let me make this uh, yellow ochre. Put a good amount of paint here. A uh, little bit of well, that's too much crimson and maybe a little bit of blue lots of white so let's start making these pools of water here you see that's all there is it was just little tricks here and there just painting over what I just did see some of these lighter areas I'm just So I'm going with the base color here, which is a lot of uh, yellow ochre. As you come forward, these pools are going to be like larger. Just here and there. As you go back there, you can barely see them. Add a little bit of red now. Here and there. Maybe a little bit of ultramarine blue as I go back there, just gray down some of this color of these pools here. Even down here. So when you're out there doing plein air, just you just want to get a quick essence of what you're seeing. Maybe add a little bit more white. To reflect more light. And you see how I'm just doing this like randomly. Maybe a little bit more blue. Some of these pools here all right let me add a variation of color let me just add ultramarine blue and the same the same pile here of color Just mix it all in together. Just add some visual interest here. Let me put in some darker areas. So now I'm like, it's what you call pushing and pulling. I'm adding some darks, I'm adding some lights, I'm going back and forth. The beauty of acrylics. Barely any white here, let me see. More. Some more of these darks here toward the edges of these pools. Here and there, just
it's okay if you go over what you just did. It's part of the process. Okay. Maybe this one back here, just flatten it out a little bit more. Remember, as you go further back, it's more of a flattened look versus the front. There's not too much detail as far as the waves and the bumps and that um, pull here. Now, I think the right here, this border is a little bit too thick. It makes it look like you got this much of the sandbar. Now, I want to reduce it. So let me just go with the lighter color watch. Just go flatten it out a little bit more. See, now it doesn't look like, there you go. Just, there you go. Now that sandbar doesn't look as deep as what it looked earlier. There you go. Let me throw a little island back here somewhere, just for the hell of it. Burnt umber, a little bit of blue make this grayish color let's throw like a little island here back there all right I'm going to make this um, I'm going to make like a little mangrove tree here somewhere. Let's make a small mangrove tree. Let's make a small mangrove tree. Let me use some Shouldn't use that. Let's see. Okay. Ultramarine blue. Let's use that. A little bit of lizard crimson, some burnt umber. So let me just make the main stem of the tree here. So let's see. Let's put it like that there you go that's gonna be the main stem let me use this fan brush and make some leaves and then I'm gonna put the rest of these stems because I really don't know how I want the stems to go yet so I'm gonna put the top first I know it sounds counterintuitive, but it's going to work. All right, so let's just... Just using the corner of the brush and I'm just making like these little C, C kind of strokes like this. All right. And let's give it some slant. There you go. Like that. Some branches down here. Some right here. Make it darker on the inside here. There you go. Just like that. Let's add a little bit down here to show like there's some mangroves growing right here too. There you go. Let me put a lot of yellow ochre, a little bit of 
this Prussian blue. It's going to give me a muted green. And the reason why it's going to give me a muted green is remember, yellow ochre has some red into it. Maybe a slight hint of white. So let's just, you know, some leaves. There you go, just like that. Not everywhere, just like that. I guess you can see it better here like that. Sorry folks, I didn't mean to, uh, I didn't realize that the camera was just showing too much of a reflection there. Let me use this yellow and a little bit of ultramarine blue, make this olive green, maybe a little bit of white. So let's see. Let's add a little bit of red light. Give it some variety, some. There you go, just like that. And now I'm not giving too much interest to this part of the mangroves. Um, I'm gonna leave it alone. And let's start adding some of those shoots that mangrove so let's start adding some of these I'm using I'm going to use a small liner brush here let's add ultramarine blue and a little bit of burnt umber use a good amount of water there to make it flow so let's start adding some root systems here. Let me add more. There you go. I know it's kind of hard to see, but we're going to add color to that in a few seconds. And remember, this is not even in a, in a reference photo. This is just uh, my imagination here. So I'm just putting the outlines. Now I know what mangroves look like. I live among them. So I'm not looking at any reference photos here. This is just my imagination. Add mangroves a little bit everywhere. Heck, let's add some mangrove. Shoots right over here too, why not? There you go. Just pat that down just to show that it's in water. A 
make these top ones darker. And then just make a little squiggly line and quickly just Just a quick basic lesson right here. There you go. All right. Now let's add some colors to some of these mangrove roots there that you saw. Let me just add on to it. Add a little bit of white. A little bit more red. Since you're not able to see them, we're going to define them. There you go, some highlights on some of these roots, okay? Not all of them, just some of them. So you can see and know that there are roots over here. Heck, let's even do in the front there. I added a little bit of blue to this mixture here just to tone it down. Put a lot of water on my brush to let it flow. There you go, some highlights to this. Let's add another highlight. There you go. Like you could use on some of these here too. Actually, let me add a couple little birds just hanging in the water, just waiting in the water. Let's put some white, maybe a little bit of ultramarine blue. water on my brush here they're pretty nondescript they're far back there you know they could be whatever birds you want them to be And the reason why I'm wiping this off, there you go, to give it like this little reflection. So it makes it that this looks a little bit darker than the actual color up here. Let me just put a little bit more. White. Give accent to some of these birds here. Like I said, I'm just having fun with this right now. And really that should be the idea behind all of this is just to have fun with it. Let me just put one that's gonna join them. Here, just like that. 
put another one. There you go. Yeah, simple enough. I could add more mangrove shoots there if I want to. I think it'll be a little bit too much. Um, I could do some here too. Just gonna leave it just like that. So your eyes are gonna be leading like this right to the main focal point. Give it like this zigzag. Because if I, I feel like if I put something here, it's just gonna kind of stop you like right here. I, I don't wanna do that. So I'm gonna leave this wide open and then just uh, move on with that. I think it gives a nice composition. There you go, I think I'm good with that. So let me just sign my uh, name. Let's see if I can do this without screwing it up. my name go into the painting ah, cheap trick all right well that is all for this lesson let me just zoom it in all right let me know what you guys think if you like this demo Leave me a comment, hit like, subscribe, and I'll have more demos for you coming soon. And uh, hopefully it'll be something that's, you know, pretty basic uh, that just about anybody can do. That's what I'm usually trying to hope for is that, you know, it's I did it simple enough that anybody can follow. And I hope my instructions were like clear enough for you. Uh, like I said, if not, just please don't, don't be shy, leave me a comment. I am pretty prompt to responding and I will help you through this. Guys, like always, have fun with your painting. Uh, make it yours and uh, enjoy. With that, I wanna say have a great evening and thank you again for watching, like, subscribe. Love you all, thanks for the support, bye.